How fast are humans mutating? New research looked at four generations of a single family to try and find out, and found that certain parts of our DNA are changing and mutating far faster than we knew. When you look at any human genome, an average human genome will differ by another human genome by about four million differences, genetic differences. And those are differences that have accumulated over time, you know, thousands and tens of thousands of generations. Geneticists have long been interested in how fast our DNA is changing to help us understand things like genetic diseases and human evolution. One way of doing that is to compare genomes within a family. When a child is born, they have new mutations that are not in either mom or dad that are specific to that child. Scientists usually compare genomes using a technique called short read sequencing, which can read DNA sequences in short chunks and compare these chunks to a complete human reference genome to figure out how they all join up. The drawback of it is that it's very incomplete. So if you have complex areas of the genome, typically the short reads won't map uniquely. And so that information is discarded. These complex parts of the genome are often full of duplicated DNA, repeats of the same chunks of code over and over. This makes them really hard to map with short read sequencing because lots of the short chunks look the same. And theory has predicted for years that these regions are actually hypermutable. What does that mean? It means they mutate faster than other areas of the ge genetic code. And so the bits that we were able to study for the last 15 years have been kind of the boring bits, in my opinion. To figure out what's going on in the complicated bits of the genome, researchers have spent the last few years working with long read sequencing, and they can now decode pretty much an entire chromosome from end to end. But to be able to really study mutation rates, Evan and his team needed to compare whole DNA sequences from a whole family. We had the good fortune of working with a colleague in Utah, Lynn Jordy, who had collected a very famous family. Uh, it's a family that's been used in genetics probably for at least 40 years. There were grandparents, children, and grandchildren in that family. And what Lynn Jordy did was actually go back to the family and ask them if they would be willing to participate in this new study where we're going to do complete sequencing. Uh, but also, Obviously, years had passed. There was now a fourth generation. And so they're now a great-grandchildren. And we were just so lucky to have this family that, you know, is willing to share their information, not just with us, but the entire world. Comparing each generation with the one that came after revealed new mutations. And there were a lot of them. Previous uh, analyses, including some of our own work, had shown that a child is born and they typically have, you know, 50 to 100 in that range new mutations. What we found is that the number of new mutations was on the order of about 100 to 200. As suspected, the parts of the genome that had been difficult to sequence were also the parts with the most mutations. The rate of new mutations was significantly higher, uh, in some cases tenfold or even more higher than the other bits of the genome. And so it told us that not all parts of the genome are created equal, right, when it comes to new mutations. Evan's lab also saw a different kind of mutation appearing in the next generation. Not just a single base pair change, but a bigger structural change. Think of it as a big chunk of sequences removed or a big chunk of sequences added. So it basically creates an extra copy of itself and creates some more duplication, right? Interestingly, these are occurring in regions that are very rich in repetitive sequences, which makes them difficult and explains why they weren't seen before. Their research shows lots more big structural mutations between generations than had previously been estimated. And there were other surprises too. One of the exciting things that we thought was interesting is that, you know, most mutations, new mutations, they happen once and then you won't see another mutation for, you know, thousands of generations in that same region. Uh, but we found regions that were changing sometimes every other generation. And some of the, the mutations that we saw were in duplicated genes. So these are genes where we have extra copies. You can think of them as redundant copies. And we saw that these regions are actually changing uh, more rapidly than their unique counterparts. If you think about it, it's not a bad evolutionary strategy, right? Because if you want, you have extra copies and you can tinker with them, you can actually create novelty more rapidly 
Evan hopes that this work could lead to a greater understanding of genetic diseases, chromosomal abnormalities and cancer, especially if they can replicate these techniques in other families. The contribution of the family was critical. Um, we couldn't have done it without them. So I'm just, I'm very much, even though I don't know who they are, I'm very much appreciative of, of them being so open um, and sharing their generosity made it possible.